Um, obviously, really excited about the beginning and start of, of practice. Um, the NCAA changed the rules uh, two years ago where we can have 42 days out from our first practice, we can have 30 days of practice. Um, so they made it similar to the kind of spring football um, model. Um, but uh, we can officially start practice Friday, October 3rd, and we have to take 12 days off in those uh, 42 days we have a lot. But um, obviously really excited about uh, what we have here in store. Uh, I, I think we've had a total of 14 scholarship players um, in my first two years here, and we actually have 12 now. So we also actually matched the total of the first two years with this one year. So um, the biggest thing that I think changes about our team is, is two things. First and foremost, we actually have experience for the first time um, in my tenure here. And along with that experience, we actually have size. Um, I know I've said this before, but we go from having three guys on our team or six, seven or above to having uh, seven guys on our team that are six, seven or above. We go from having one guy on our team that's six, nine or above to having four guys on the team who are six, nine or above. So I'm really excited about what we can do. And I think it's going to help our players individually, and it's obviously going to help our team individually now that there'll be competition um, for those minutes on the front line. Um, but the second thing is I just think allows for simulation and practice where when we go play in Kentucky, we go play in LSU, that's the first time our guys have played against size is in a game instead of in uh, game again, excuse me, day-to-day -day competition and practice. So um, we're really looking forward to it. I think uh, Fred Thomas has done a phenomenal job for us here in this offseason, and I would be surprised and shocked if he isn't a first-team all-SEC defensive guy. Uh, we uh, will put him on the best perimeter player for the opposing team every time, and I think he'll do a fantastic job of, of showing his defensive prowess. Um, obviously, we need um, Gavin Ware and uh, Chicken to continue to make strides in their game, um, but the thing that I like the most about our team at this point in time is the fact that nothing is promised um, because of the competition for minutes. Um, so if you've been here for two years, whether you're a Chicken or a Gavin or a Fred Thomas, there's actually competition for those minutes now. And I think in order for us to make a jump as a program, um, that's what we need. With Travis and Falu, obviously you mentioned they made a big transformation in the last year or so. How, how big is it now to have them from making the team better in practice to actually knowing they're going to be on the court this year and playing big minutes? I know technically those two guys are newcomers. Um, but they're unique and really they're not new, newcomers to the program. So the first time they set foot on the court, be the first time they actually play basketball, um, but they have been here the whole year, in Travis' case, the whole semester. So I think that benefits them as far as like not being true newcomers. I think with Travis Daniels, first and foremost, he's probably our most skilled guy on the team uh, besides maybe I.J. Reddy. He can do so many different things, and he's a legitimate 6'8 guy, and he has a body to compete in the SEC right away. We just need him to be an aggressive guy. Um, he's such a good person. He tends to be passive at times, and he wants to make sure everybody likes him. Um, but we need him to be aggressive because when he's, I told him, try to explain to him, when he's aggressive, he's helping the team because he's such a good person. He's going to make the right decision once that time comes when he gets into the paint. So um, he's probably our most talented guy. Does that mean he's our best player? That remains to be seen. But as far as like, if you went and watched him in a practice or an individual workout, you say, hey. He might be their best player, so I think that helps our team. Uh, with Lou Endoy, just having the size um, that we haven't had in the past, and the fact that he's done a really good job in the weight room and added strength. He hasn't had it added as much weight as we would like, um, but he's gotten tremendously stronger here this year sitting out. So we'll actually have a guy that can go up and challenge shots at the rim and finish at the rim. And I think with, with Falou Endoy and Oliver Black at those two positions, the five and the four, I think you can do anything you want to as far as ball screen D because of those guys' mobility and ability for them to move their feet. Can you talk about the other newcomers that you've got and what you've seen from them in workouts? Yeah, I think uh, Maurice Dunlop, first and foremost, uh, chose to be here both summers, and I think that move for him has been really beneficial. Um, he's gotten so much bigger and stronger in the offseason that it, uh, he's really a kid that's worked hard for everything he's got, and I've been surprised the way he's dedicated himself to basketball here in this offseason. Um, he's a guy that can make a difference on our team because of his ability to shoot the basketball. But the thing we've come to find out with, with Dunlop is he's a determined worker. Uh, he's coming here almost every day. He got up shots on his own, got on the shooting gun. 
Um, so he's a guy that's put in the time and effort in order to get better. Um, I think he's a guy that can get by people. He has a tremendous burst. His thing will now, once he gets into the lane, this will be the first time he's had to finish against size and make a decision whether I try to finish against that size or whether I dump down and make the right decision. So we've got to get him to the point where he feel, feels comfortable doing those things because he's been really good as far as like getting by his man and getting to the lane. Um, I think Demetrius Houston is going to be a fantastic player for us. Uh, he's even better than I thought he would be. Um, he's six seven. He's a legitimate three man, and I just don't see anybody on the court that's going to be more athletic than him. He's a guy that can finish at the rim against anybody. Um, I think as he learns the game of basketball and continues to increase his skill level, I don't see how he doesn't end up being an All SEC type caliber guy um, because there's nobody with that size and length and athleticism. Um, as far as opposing teams. Um, I, I think if you start to look at Oliver Black, he's a little bit in the same situation that Fred Thomas was in two years ago um, because he was trying to get some things done academically with the eligibility center. He didn't get here at all in the summertime. So it's now, is he behind everybody else because of that? Can he catch up with everybody else because he didn't have the summer that those guys had in front of him? Um, so he's done a great job. He's a tremendous worker. Um, every sprint drill, he wins all our sprint drills at 6'9". Um, he's the guy that's locking people in conditioning. Um, he's gotten so much bigger and stronger just in the little time that he's been here. His thing will be like, can he catch up to everybody else at this point in time? But I tell you what, he's putting in the effort to do that. And I just think with big guys these days, if you can get guys that just like play hard and give an effort, then they're going to get better. And I think that's what he's going to do. So I'm excited about him. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm not missing anybody. We already talked about Falou. We talked Johnny. about Travis. Oh, Johnny Zapardo is a guy that just – the thing about Johnny Zapardo is that if you don't think he's good, just ask him. Um, <laughs> he's got a tremendous amount of confidence in himself and in his game, and that's what you want. You, you want a guy that goes out there and thinks that he can be successful at this level and play against anybody. And obviously he's had success at the junior college level, leading his team to a national junior college title the first time ever in the state of Mississippi. So he's a guy that brings an edge um, to it, and I think he's got a skill level. He's similar to Colin as far as like his ability to pass and shoot and dribble, but I think what sets him apart is the fact that he's got a competitive chip on his shoulder. And he's not afraid to go in there and mix it up with his back to the basket and get offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds. He's just a highly competitive kid. The reason he's highly competitive is the fact that he thinks he's pretty damn good. <laughs> you mentioned to me.